Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a artist that would have been perfect for Dusk Morn, but he was banned. Yes, yes, he is banned from making more Magic the Gathering artwork like Teresa Nielsen. Now, I've gone over Teresa Nielsen. I think she is a OG. I think she's great. I think her artwork is classic Magic the Gathering. Now, Seb... You know, I don't know as much about him, but his artwork is hauntingly beautiful. Would have been perfect for a horror set. And yet, uh, he's nowhere to be found, which is kind of weird, right? Uh, it is kind of weird in a set where it is a beautiful set. It is, his artwork would fit right in, in my opinion, in other people's opinions, Yet, he is nowhere, his artwork is nowhere to be found because of his vaccine, his anti-vax stance, which people used as a way to get Wizard of the Coast to ban him. Not only is he banned, so that means he's not creating current artwork for Wizard of the Coast. Uh, he is also, his old artwork, just like Teresa Nielsen's Force of Will, is being replaced by new artists. Uh, with political beliefs more aligned with Wizards of the Coast themselves. This, I feel, is something really wrong with society, even if, I mean, especially art. Art of all things, you know, when you talk about how crazy some of these people are, and they are crazy artists, hey man, like, you might not agree with uh, Van Gogh. You probably do not agree with Van Gogh. You probably don't agree with Picasso. Any, I mean, some of these people are communists, right? You may not agree with their political beliefs, but can you go to a museum and appreciate their artwork? Can you buy a portrait and appreciate their artwork? I would say, yeah. Um, I would say, yes, that it is quite possible for you to appreciate other people and their artistical value. Now, one thing that I want to kind of make very clear here is no one is no one is granted no no one is I'm not saying that like he ha they have to pick him, right? That that's a private company making a private decision to pick a certain artist. I just find it kind of weird that like Teresa Nielsen, uh, his artwork has just been kind of erased. Uh, Teresa Nielsen, remember, her artwork was defaced by Reed Duke, by obviously our champion, Autumn Bruccelli. Like, these are the people defacing artwork, and, and the history does not hold these people very well. They're not going to stand the test of time, I promise you this. 15 years from now, magic is still going. We're going to look at this and say, wow, that's crazy that these two artists, Teresa Nielsen and Seb McKinnon, were essentially run out of the business because of their political beliefs. I truly believe that because history has a way of repeating itself, right? You got the book burners. Uh, I don't think anyone burning books has ever come up ahead uh, in, in history, right, in long term because we like freedom of ideas. Uh, and then we got the, uh, I mean, what was that? Like, I was watching a movie. It was like some type of like Egypt movie and it was like some woman who was like a, a mathematician or something and they burned down like the library of alexandria and so on like history doesn't hold these book burners or art defacers i'm oh oh yeah of course uh in 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 iraq the taliban right they the, the first thing the taliban go after is the artwork of historical value right that's the first thing they go after when they're getting the power they just destroy museums and destroy artifacts and you know this is your country's history man you're not i mean it's not cool to go to your museum of your country's history and just just rant just destroy everything and set it on fire this is magic the gathering history seb is part of magic the gathering history no matter what you say he's made some of the most beautiful cards in the game and the fact that he's no longer allowed to you know to make the dusk morning is really sad you know, it is it's very weird because uh, no one else will talk about this, right? No one else will talk about it. No one else will talk about Teresa Nielsen because they're too busy licking the boots of Wizard of the Coast. But one day, I promise you this, Wizard of the Coast is going to look back at what they did and they're going to be a, they're going to be like, wow, we made a mistake. Uh, Ubisoft is saying this right now. Ubisoft is getting absolutely butchered right now. Uh, Concourse, right? Whatever these games are, they're not selling. Do, do you understand? Like The whole idea of a game software company is to sell games. 
if they don't sell and then a random Chinese developer uh, making their first game uh, Black Myth Wukong can outsell you know Sony with its uh, 100 million dollar project that's not good like at the end of the day money talks and you can spouse whatever nonsense you want but at the end of the day you gotta sell the product and I think Wizard of the Coast is going down a a way where they're censoring people look man I, I get it you know hey maybe this art is not for you maybe it's meta zoo art not for you i get that totally but when you deface someone else's artwork and you promote the person defacing their artwork that's never historically been good and when you post about seb and his uh, views on that i mean the covid and there used to be a time on youtube you can't even mention the word covid I'm not kidding. There used to be a time where if you mentioned the word COVID, they would censor your video, put a little thing on it. I mean, it's not cool, right? It is not cool what people were doing at the time. And I get it. Hey, you feel this way about COVID. But what about other people who feel a different way about COVID? It's, um, it's crazy to me that so many people are and they change their minds. Like in five to ten years, you might have a different opinion about COVID than you did do today or even when COVID was happening in 2020. It's okay to have different opinions. And that should not affect artwork. That shouldn't affect whether or not you read somebody's book or enjoy somebody's painting in a museum. But that's where we are today. I mean, it's a sad, sad place to be, to be honest, where people's people's opinions political opinions uh, are determining whether or not they're getting commissions for artwork artwork especially the creative side of artwork like let me ask you this what does what the f does we read duke or uh, autumn bricelli know about artwork they're not artists what the, what the hell are they they're magic players so what what right does a magic player have to say oh this artwork is offensive to me because of the person making it like what, in what reality do we live in where a person who has never drawn a stick figure is going to judge somebody's artwork? Well, uh, you know, like, I, again, I think Wizard of the Coast should always be reminiscent. They, they should always try to hire the best talent they can have. And you see this with Ubisoft and so on. Instead of hiring the best developers they have based regardless of religion or regardless of race, regardless of gender identification, they hire people that fit a certain quota. Well, look at their fucking games right now. It is terrible. Their games are awful, guys. Sweet Baby Ink. Any game that Sweet Baby Ink touches, and by the way, they work on Magic the Gathering, in case you didn't know. It goes to zero, man. No one wants to play the game, not because... You know, they, they're afraid of, you know, diversity. No, it's because the game sucks. You know, it sucks. You know, I don't know how to say. Mechanically, it's terrible. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.